Hello everyone, Richard Walling here. Listen, I'm just going to run through um, some of the sample data for a mandatory PRAC uh, that's out of the Queensland uh, Senior Physics Syllabus. Um, this is the one where you have to investigate the force acting on a conductor in a magnetic field. Um, I developed a little uh, device that helps you do that. So I'll just run through it. Um, this really is just to show you what it looks like and to provide some sample data. Um, not a lot of, um, there are some people who just can't get the equipment or can't get any equipment to do this practically themselves. So um, this might be useful for um, writing up the PRAC or even just doing it for revision. Okay, so in the um, QCAA uh, sample, one of, the, one of the sample external exams, um, they have this diagram uh, which gives an idea of what QCAA was thinking about. Um, basically, it's just a wire between uh, the poles of a magnet. And when a current flows through the wire, there's a uh, force acting between the wire and the magnet, and you get a reading on the balance. Now, that's not a very good diagram. Uh, there's a whole lot of problems with it. I mean, you'd need a really strong magnet for that distance between the poles. The magnetic field strength is probably quite weak. It's not supported, but this is only a schematic diagram, so it's never intended to be um, anything more than that. Okay, here's the one I developed. Now, I'll run through this in a bit more detail later, but basically it's just a piece of copper wire. You can see it there um, between the poles of two little uh, rare earth magnets. Okay, and they're on a balance. That's just the pan of a electronic balance. So when a current passes through the wire, it goes along through the wire and then up the other wire and you get a force because it's a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Okay, here's the bits and pieces I used. Now that's just a cork out of a wine bottle and I've put a um, piece of copper wire through it like that. Now I've made the copper wire a bit smaller. What I've done in future is use the um, the length of the copper wire there matches these the diameter of these magnets so that all of the wire is in the direct magnetic field. I've got a little piece of aluminium channel there. Now that's just from Bunnings. It's just one centimetre by one centimetre by one centimetre. And you can buy a metre of it for about $6 or something. These little button magnets, um, you can get them from Bunnings, but um, I got mine from Aussie Magnets. Um, I wanted wider ones. I wanted 1.5 centimetres diameter and five meters, uh, five millimeters in um, in, de in uh, length or depth, if you like. Um, they're quite strong. They're good little magnets. Okay, let's move on. Oh, look, um, what you'll find, if you're a um, student uh, that uses my textbook, the Oxford textbook, um, there's a couple of videos in there to do with magnetism. This is one that I made. Um, Oxford had some professionals come to my lab and they filmed me doing this little experiment. I don't have any sample results in it, but um, it's just a neat little way of me explaining the setup. So if you're using the textbook, you could always ask your teacher to send you the link for this video. It goes for about nine minutes. It might be useful. The um, next prac we're going to look at is mandatory prac 7.4, force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Basically, all we do for this prac is to have a piece of wire in a magnetic field and increase the current through the wire and notice the change in the forces on the wire. Um, and I'll show you the setup in a minute. That's all I, I just did an excerpt from it. Oxford owns copyright for these, so I can't show more than a little tiny bit. But um, teachers can assign these to students from the O-book and um, you'll be able to see it. Now here's the setup. Um, I used at school. This was just um, during one of the pracs. I got one of, asked one of my students to just quickly run through it. Now I've put that onto um, YouTube. There's the um, URL for for the YouTube video. Um, I'm a, I'll I'll play a little bit of it. Um, I won't play the video straight away. Um, I'll just show you the bits and pieces. But you can see there's the electronic balance. There's that little device I was talking about, my ammeter and a rheostat here, or a potentiometer just to 
um, get the right sort of current flowing through the um, or through the coil uh, through the uh, little piece of wire and just my laboratory power supply. So I set it on about two volts, then use the potentiometer, this rear stat or potentiometer, um, just to cut the voltage, uh, reduce the voltage to whatever I want on the slider so that I can change the current through it. And that works pretty well. Now, it only goes for about 20 seconds. Now, as she moves the slider, you can see the current is greater and greater, one amp, and you're getting a reading of about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 grams. So that's what the uh, uh, the force down on it's like that. Now, I just did a close-up here. You can see the bits and pieces, the two magnets, the piece of wire and the channel, and that's it. So I might give you some idea of one way of doing it. Okay, now I've, ref I've filmed this again because I... I wanted you to be able to get pairs of data. Now, I'm not going to read the data out, but um, when I start the experiment, I'll use this little um, this little rear stat here, or potentiometer here. Now, I'll go through the bits and pieces. I've labelled them in the next diagram. Now, you can see I've just got a digital multimeter, a DMM. Now, it's on the 10 amp scale. You can you mightn't be able to see, but there's a the um, selector there knob goes to the 10a and i've got the um the positive plugged into the 10 amp 10 amp socket and the black one the negative goes into the common socket so this gives a reading in amps here um, i've got a the potentiometer is just a variable resistor now i bought a 5 ohm one from jcar they're 15 watts but i bought a 5 ohm one uh, wire wound one. Now that was about $17. Now I know they're dear, but you need something really that's about, uh, you know, 5 to 10 to 15 maybe, you know, or so somewhere around that in ohms, so that you can divide up the two volts um, into a range of uh, voltages that are suitable, um, so that you get currents here. Now <clears throat> I, only, I only go up to about 1 amp, because it's two volts one amp that's a about two watts now this thing's supposed to be able to get up handle up to 15 watts but you know it started to really get hot at about one amp with two volts and that's only two watts um, so i wouldn't like to push it too far but uh you could that's probably that's good enough you'll get you enough data points for that okay and then the power supply that's just the ordinary um, power supply set on about two volts DC. I wouldn't go any higher than that um, unless you want to put some resistors in. But anyway, that's the setup. Um, and you can see I've got a little positive sign at the back of the cork. So that's connected basically, uh, if you follow it through, um, it goes this red wire through the rheostat back up here and then into the positive. So the current effectively is going up here through the um, that yellow wire comes down here comes forward and goes up and then goes back um, to the ammeter and then out back to the uh, power supply okay here's a close-up now you'll see um, you can use any sort of ammeter but like i said i've got it set on the 10 amp um, setting i'll just go to the next slide i've labeled this um, you can see the 10 amp scale. This is a 10 amp input, and basically it just reads the, the that'll be amps. So that's 0 0.40 of an amp. And then the scale reading here, um, you can see it's in G for grams, so it's 0 0.14 grams. Now, of course, this is to do with forces, so you'd have to convert that scale reading in grams. Now, it's not really a mass, even though, or a weight, it's a scale reading. That's the best way to call it. Now, to get a force, in other words, the weight or the, the force that's being pushed down on the balance, uh, you use your formula, F equals mg. Now, the mass has to be in kilograms, so it's that 0.14 divided by 1,000 and then multiply it by g, which is 9.8, um, just the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, let's move on. So here's another, another image of the magnets. Um, and I've got the piece of wire going through them and so on. So that's a close-up. 
In the next slide, I've labeled the poles uh, north and south and so on, so you can see it. Okay, now when you've got these, it's hard to tell which way is north and which is south. All I do is just take one of these magnets, put it on a flat surface, and let it move if it's a shiny or it's a smooth surface. It'll orientate itself, um, and the, the side of the magnet that points north is the north pole. So you can then, I just label them with a felt pen. So south and north, south and north. Now when you put them either side of this aluminium channel, they're attracted. The unlike, unlike poles attract, so they sit there and they don't go anywhere. They, there's a bit of friction in there and they just sit there. So that's sitting on the balance pan. And I've got the current coming down the back wire, coming towards you. And then, now I'm going to use the term towards you. I mean, that's typically you'd say out of the page. So it's coming out towards you. And then it's going up the front here. Okay. The magnetic field goes across that way. And that background is just the scale, the electronic balance scale pan. Okay. Now I've taken this a bit side on so you can see what's going on. You can see I've got an S there. So that's the south side of that magnet and the side touching the channel is north. And then it's the opposite over there. So the magnetic field goes across from one side to the other. So from that side across to that side and the current comes down the back, comes forward towards you out of the page and then up. So I think I've labeled that now. So that's the length. Now, like I said before, I used 15 millimeter um, diameter magnets. So the length of the wire I've made 15 um, millimeters as well, so that all of the wires in the field. Now I used to have it so that it was much wider, the wire was much longer. And I assumed only 15 millimeters was in the field, but um, students said to me, well, how do you know there's not some field around the edges here? So the magnetic field is a lot bigger than 15 and that's true. And that was a good improvement that they made. Um, these magnets are 3300 Gauss. That's how they're expressed. The uh, magnetic field strength is expressed in Gauss, but that's 0.33 Tesla um, or 3300. That's what they're sold as. So it's a fairly uniform field between them um, because I've got two. If it was just one magnet, the field would diminish uh, with distance. Okay, let's move on. Here are the here are the um, the force di well, this is the force diagram. So the magnetic field goes across. The current's coming towards you, and if you use your um, hand rule, now I use Fleming's left hand rule for this. So um, my big finger points in the direction of B. My, um, sorry, my index finger points in the direction of B. My um, if you see it like I can't do it but you'll you'll see it in the next diagram my big finger middle finger points towards the current that's out of the page and your thumb points up now you can also use the right hand palm rule some <clears throat> teachers and students prefer the right hand palm rule or the right hand slap rule it's often called okay let's have a look at this um, in the next diagram okay you can see now i've just taken this out of the um, my textbook so there's the reference for it but you can see <clears throat> the magnetic field is across, across the page, and <clears throat> excuse me, the current is coming forward, and so your thumb, the force on the wire is up. Now, people, students often get tangled up in this. If the force on the wire is up, the magnets and the magnetic field must be pushing down because of Newton's third law, which um, talks about equal and opposite forces or action and reaction, if you like. So the magnets are being forced down as the wire gets forced up. So the, the reading on the scale pan, the reading on the pan gets bigger and bigger. Now you can do the same as that for um, the slap rule or the right hand palm rule. You get the same sort of answer. The main thing is the force is up, force on the wire is up. Therefore, the magnets are forced down and you get a positive reading on the balance. OK, <clears throat> let's get some data. Now I'm just I'm not going to talk through this all. I'll, I'll say a few words, but um, you can see the setup's the same as before. I'm going to zoom in just on the two scales, and then I'll increase. What I'm going to do, it'll be off camera, you won't see it, but I'm going to increase 
um, or change the setting of this, I'm actually going to decrease the resistance so that um, more, more current effectively flows. So this will, when I turn it on, <coughs> excuse me, it goes to about 0.3 something, 0.35 of, a, of an amp, but that's, that's the minimum setting I can get um, out of this. So we're going to take our first reading at about 0.4 of an amp, <coughs> and I'll hold it steady for a little while so you can write down the scale pan readings. Now this is trial one or the test one. I'm going to do a duplicate so you, you can have some error analysis. So this is experiment one where the current's coming towards you. So coming out of the page, if you like. <clears throat> so you get a positive reading on the balance. OK, let's see how we go with this. Um, here it goes. Now I'm zooming in just so you can see the two readings. And I haven't turned it on yet. You might hear a click. And I turned it on. OK, so there's my... I wouldn't take that as a first reading. I mean, you can if you like. But um, I'm going to wind up that rheostat, or wind it down so that it gives a reading of 0.4. So there it is there. 0.4 amps, <clears throat> and you can take a scale reading in grams. OK, so now that I'm happy with that, and you've had time to write that down, I'll go up to 0.5. Now it's a bit um, a bit hard to get it exact, but there it is there, 0.5, and you can get a scale reading off there. I'm going up to 0.6. Now I'm doing this fairly quickly, but <clears throat> the scale, the pan reading doesn't change much. <clears throat> Just 0.7 somewhere in there. <clears throat> the higher the current the harder it is to adjust the rheostat um, to get an exact, um, to get it stable on the number you want. So here we go at 0.8. There it is there. Okay, let's move on and I'll wind it up a bit more. That's good enough for 0.8. Now it's, when I was doing this, uh, it was starting to get hot. So there's, there's 0.9. Somewhere in there. Okay, it's fairly steady. Okay, and then I'll, it's, it's getting quite warm by now, so um, I'll just quickly do the, the last one. See, I had trouble getting it at 0.9. Here we go up to one amp. Now it's, it's pretty. Um, tricky to get right there it is there quickly get a reading and it's not the scale reading is not changing much okay so then I wind it back <clears throat> check that I'm still when I turn it off check that the balance goes back to zero um, and there's no zero error that's crept in okay there it is there back to zero um, now if that if there was a reading on there I'd have a problem I'd have to do it again I think okay so let's move on here it is again <coughs> And I'm calling this video to get ready to collect your second lot of data. OK, I'll start that up and you can see <coughs> zooming in again. Now, this is this is not a repeat. This is a duplicate. Um, it's not the same video shown twice. Um, so here we go. It's been turned on. Now I'll crank it up till I get 0.4 and take a reading. OK, now. That's your duplicate. Okay, so you can average the two results and you can do a um, error analysis on that. You can work out the uncertainty. Okay, 0.5. Now you'll notice they all look pretty much the same as before. It's nice and steady. Up we go to 0.7. Okay, that's pretty good. Quick, take that. We'll go to point 0.8. There it is there. Let's move on. Starting to get hot again. <coughs> you can see I'm, I'm having trouble getting it at exactly point 0.8 and to stay there. <coughs> Up to point 0.9. 
and then And then we're going up to one. Okay. So when that's stable, take your final reading. Okay, now I'll turn that back down so that it goes right back down again. Ready for another experiment. So there I go, back to this start, turn it off, and I'm getting a reading of zero on the balance again. So that's right, there's no zero error crept in. Okay, so you've got your two pieces of data and you can do the analysis. Now, I'm not going to go through the analysis. That's that's for you to do. Um, I'll show you a graph a bit later on. <clears throat> okay, now, <clears throat> um, what we can do, um, you can do this at the same time, or you might think, what would happen if we put the current um, in reverse? In other words, going away from you or into the page now, if you use Fleming's left-hand rule, and I've just got the page again for the uh, reference for Fleming's left-hand rule, or for those of you using the right-hand palm or slap rule, um, you'll find this time as the current goes into the page, the force is acting down. Okay, so that will cause the balance to rise up, or the uh, pan and the magnets to rise up. So what will happen... Um, because basically the, the piece of wire is being pulled down towards the balance. So the balance is being pulled up towards the wire. So the reading should go into the negative. Now, you could either do this with your first experiment. Now, in the textbook, the one I wrote for the textbook, I stop at where we are now. But it's, you know, what I've started doing in, um, in the last year anyway, as I got the students to run the current in reverse and to make the graph go right through um, from the positive quadrant down into a negative quadrant where you have effectively a negative current and a negative scale reading or negative force um, and the line should go through uh, through the origin and it's um, much better now if you haven't done that you could use this as a modification to the original experiment so you'll get some nice little data out of here now you could call it an extension you're extending the current uh, from zero into the negatives <clears throat> or you could call it a, a redirection because um, even though you've got the same variables um, you're actually running the current in reverse you've got forces in a different direction um, so it's <clears throat> it's enough of a change enough of a modification I think call it a redirection but um, it's up to you and your teachers okay here's the setup again now look I won't <coughs> um, I'll just run through the prac. So I'll start it up, but you'll notice I've got the yellow wire hooked up to the negative. Now. Oh, well, originally I called it the negative. So the current is now going in this one and then back into the page and then out through the other one. So the current's reversed inside the magnet in the uh, between the poles of the magnet. So let's have a look and see how we go. Whoops, wrong way. Um, so let's do exactly the same as before and I'm zooming in <clears throat> but what you'll notice this time when I turn it on I'll still get my reading of okay but you'll notice it's negative because the force is lifting the balance up so it's reading in the negative so I'll go to point four and you should notice that it's almost the same as before so take the readings so that's point four, and I'll just let it go through. Now, don't forget to convert these to force um, before you start doing your uh, uncertainty uh, you want the uncertainty in the force not in the in the grams in the mass or the scale reading rather and you'll be plotting that up the y-axis so there it is 0.8 of an amp
and lastly the one amp <coughs> hard to get it steady um, oh there that's nice and steady okay you can take a reading that's not changing much so I'm I've wound it back down then I turn it off and here it go off and it's back to zero so that was lucky I've had some cases where it um, goes to point oh one of a gram um, just a bit of um, well you could call a zero error systematic errors crept in somehow okay this is my final video this is number four so again this is experiment two if you like where the current is coming is going away from you but this is the second trial so get ready to collect the final bit of data and here we go so <clears throat> zoom into the scale turn it on and it's about 0.35 or 0.36 and now I wind it up to 0.4 to get our first reading. And there it is there. Okay, nice and steady, up to 0.5. So that's about there. Now you could always get a, a balance that reads to three decimal places if you wanted to. Uh, you probably have to go and borrow one off the chemistry um, people because um, they're, they're the two thousand dollar balances these these little ones here are only a um, few hundred dollars um, if you didn't have any of this equipment you could probably do it on a spring balance i've never tried that but um, you'd get away with it i think or even a rubber band the wire being pulled down by a rubber band but um, it keep the wire would keep moving out of the field uh, and it'd be really hard to keep it consistent okay there's your point nine and lastly the one amp is coming up that's good enough quick move on That's good enough take that down let's move on so there's the one amp all right steady no it's pretty steady it's not changing the scale reading's not changing um, so you can take a reading there somewhere about there okay so <clears throat> i've got my final reading or you've got your final reading now i just wind it back to the start and turn it off and here it go off and it's back to zero so thankfully that's worked so you've got all of the data you need now it's just a matter of plotting it i'm not going to run through all of that i've had other videos about that and you've got worksheets from your teacher and so on and in the textbook there's plenty to go on <coughs> when i talk about the textbook this is the one the oxford one this came out in 2019 um, that's the unit three and four one um, i'll move on now look out of the in the back of the text um, page 408 it looks like there there's the prac that I've written up um, just with the uh, the two little magnets and the wire and all the rest of it and the instructions now I haven't put the rest of the task sheet on this um, PowerPoint uh, I mean that's copyright and so Oxford wouldn't want to see too much on it but there's enough there to, for you to give the to get the idea of what it's like and that's in the textbook it's also in the O book which is the uh, digital uh, version and in the resource material so your teacher will have all of that um, what I've also done is put some model answers in or model results um, I haven't put the first page in but here we go there's all the results from you can see the currents going down here from 0.4 to 1 amp and there's the scale reading in grams now I've done that on a, um, a three decimal place balance from chemistry um, just to see but you don't really need it um, you can just do it with the ordinary two decimal place ones converted to a force in newtons worked out an average and worked out the uncertainty okay i've drawn some graphs you can see it's fairly linear the dotted line through the middle and i've put some um, maximum and minimum graphs on there to do the analysis and so on now i'm not going to go into any of that now um, i just want to show you that it's there um, if you are using that book um, you've got all that if you're not using the book uh, you've got plenty of data <coughs> to plot um, <coughs> if you wanted to see more about this I've 
did a session at UQ, University of Queensland, and at Griffith Uni um, in 2019, November 2019, um, for teachers. Now it goes for about an hour and a half. This it's a YouTube, uh, yeah, YouTube clip. Um, I ran through a lot of electromagnetism experiments for the new syllabus, um, and it has videos of what I've just shown you, little bits and pieces, a couple of graphs, and some some other stuff. So there's the link down the bottom and that's it okay so i hope that was useful and i'll stop there